Hey guys, so before this video, I just wanted to say this meant absolutely everything to me. If you've been following my content for a while, you'd know one of my hobbies was to meet famous people, but there was always someone who was my absolute dream to meet, and that was Lenore Zan. And in last November, that dream finally came true, and absolutely so much more than I could have hoped. I spent a few days with Lenore getting to know her, not just for a character that I loved, but for her as a person too. And she was just everything I hoped for and more. So thank you so much, Lenore, for everything. And I hope you guys enjoy this video. And here's a little bit before we get into it. So yeah, enjoy. So most people will know Lenore Zan as the iconic voice of the original Rogue in the X-Men cartoons, but some people might not know she also voiced a character called Master Cyclonus, which was from an animated TV show called Stormhawks. Storms made us. Storms tore us apart. And now, storms will help us rebuild my way. This aired on Cartoon Network in the UK, I'm not sure where it aired around the world, but Growing up, Cyclonus was always my favourite character. This wasn't just because she was like a goth looking, cool looking character, but she was a really strong female villain. Like, she was smart, powerful, and didn't give up, unlike most villains back when I was a kid that would mostly get caught by the good guys. You know, like every single Scooby Doo episode, the bad guy would always be caught and revealed that it was their plans, <laughs> you know. She wasn't like that. You win some, you lose some. Apparently now the same goes for you, Dark Ace. Don't worry. Atmos is going to learn soon enough that I've got much more in store for it. And as for the Stormhawks, they'll pay for what they've done. Cyclonus meant so much to me and still does to this day that I'm so honored to be able to share this video with you all. Hey guys, welcome to my new video interviewing my all-time favourite actor, voice actor, who played Cyclonus from Stormhawks, Lenorzen. Hello darling. <laughs> Hi there. We are together. We, <laughs> we managed to make it to Southampton in the UK after a couple of years now of yeah. talking back and forth from me in North America. And you in here. The UK. So here we are. Nice to be here. And hello. <laughs> hello, little Cyclonus puppet. <laughs> Where was the recording done for Stormhawks for Cyclonus? We did that in Vancouver. So it was all Canada based? It was Canada based. And I had just moved there from, uh, I think, from Los Angeles. I'd been there in LA for a few years and then I decided to move back to Canada and I bought a place in Vancouver and Stormhawks was one of the shows that I did there. Um, they had also done another show called uh, uh, Booster, Dragon Booster, Dragon Booster and I played like a, a good character in that. I played like the lead little girl, Kit Wan who could race dragons and beat the boys and you know she was really an uplifting fun character like a real tough little nut and uh, and then they 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 said that they're gonna be doing this new show and they cast me as the master evil master Cyclonus well that actually like covers one of the other questions were you like did you have to audition for a Cyclonus or were you just kind of offered it no I auditioned for it yeah you did? yeah yeah. I'm so glad you got chosen. <laughs> Thank you, me too, yes. You, you, Cyclonus is just so perfect. Well, it was nice too because I, I hadn't really played a lot of villains at that point in time. You know, I usually play like the femme fatales or like the rah 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 cheerleaders, you know. Rogue. <laughs> and rogue. So yeah, so it was really fun to play like an evil character for a change. With the recording, did you record it like separately in booths or were you all like as a group recording? We were together as a group in Vancouver. Um, sometimes they separated us to do some scenes, but for the most part we were all in there together. Yeah, 
that's the way we originally did X-Men too in the 90s was all of us together like a radio play like a radio drama in the one studio and it made it kind of fun because we could play opposite each other and make fun of each other <laughs> stuff like that <laughs> so you know like Sam Vincent and stuff yeah I speak to him a little online oh so, nice so, he's so sweet and he yeah. made a little dark ace video when I tweeted something to him and it was just hilarious fantastic yeah they're all really nice the, the Vancouver casts I enjoyed being out there for a number of years. Do you have any funny memories or moments from recording Stormworks? Oh my goodness, do I have any funny memories? Oh, it's quite a while ago and um... Yeah, it's like over 10 years now, I think. Yeah, I, I can't remember anything specific. I just know that they were very, very um, funny and creative group and they could probably they could do anything you know with their voices and uh, we just we just really enjoyed playing opposite each other but I don't remember thinking anything specific yeah like you're saying about uh, they could do anything with their voices it was only like within the last couple of years I found out Sam played Aero, the main hero, and Dark Ace, like the right, villain. I have right. no idea. They were so different in voices. And yeah. He's underrated and he deserves all this love. His voice range is right. ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. It's so good. Yeah. Um, were you given like any creative freedom for voicing Cyclonus, or were you kind of given like we want you to sound like this character or that character? No, they gave me complete freedom. You know, but they wanted that lower tone, that lower, dark, mellifluous kind of tone, you know, um, which I really enjoy going down to because some of my other characters, like I said, like uh, Kit Wan was much higher. And then also like Rogue in the X-Men, I, I use my own voice for her, but with a southern accent. So, you know, you know, my daddy liked to kill himself when he found out I was a mutant. <laughs> You know, <laughs> get out of my mind. <laughs> you look about as nervous as a long-tailed cat in a room full of rocking chairs. <laughs> so, Cyclonus is quite a bit different from that. She's yeah. like much lower and I'm going to mind control you now. <laughs> she wishes she could mind control you. Yes. Is there, like when you were given Cyclonus as a character, was there any other characters that you were inspired by for her? Or? Hmm. Well, a lot of evil characters at the time were, were men, but I just imagined her as being this woman, this woman who might have seen other people come and go who were men and who had, you know, clawed their way to the top or were given breaks or whatever and she was fed up with that <laughs> and she just wanted to power through it and show the world what she could do. That, oh, we're on the same page with this because I was literally going to say something like it was one of my favorite things with Cyclonus and the reason she was one of my favorites is she was a powerful female villain. Mm -hmm. She wasn't like it usually is always guys and mm -hmm. it was for like years it was like you know I can't yeah. even think of any characters off the top of my head like Joker from Batman mm -hmm. for example mm -hmm. they were always guys and Cyclonus was actually an intelligent female and she wasn't like stupid either it was like for the first time there was a good villain who was yeah. smart and actually like got away with things they didn't just say oh look She's beaten again every single time. Right, so. right. And, and she was really powerful. Yeah. Which I really, I loved, I loved that. You know, I, I really would have liked to see that show continue longer. Me too. Yeah, you know, I mean, I think it had some great, great, great opportunity, but I don't know, I, I we didn't do too many of the, uh, of the seasons. But yeah, there was only two seasons. Yeah. I still have the poster of it in my house. 
I still have the Stormhawks poster. Oh. But I don't think uh, Master Cyclonus isn't in the poster, though. It's no, the, that's the rest not of them. fair. Yeah. They didn't put her on much of anything. No. I've got a few bits that yeah. I kind of sourced that weren't easy to get that right. have her in it. Ah. So, yeah, they didn't put her in much. Mm. And it made me sad because I was like, I want a figure. They made all, like, because I was <laughs> no, only like right. 12 or something when I watched it. I was like, I yeah. want a Cyclonus. And, when I, could, you know, as I got older and could make stuff, it's like, do I have a puppet? There you go. Yeah, it's great. Are you still, like, in contact with any of the other Stormhawks voice actors, or...? Not so much, because um, I moved, like, across the other end of the country. Yeah. So Vancouver's on the west coast, and after I spent uh, a number of years in Vancouver doing movies and television and animation and even theater, um, I moved back to Los Angeles, and then I wrote a play uh, about Marilyn Monroe, uh, a one-woman show about Marilyn Monroe, a musical that I wanted to do in New York. So I started writing it in L.A., and I was staying near to where she, the house that she died in Santa Monica. So I was very inspired there. I went to her the, the 40th anniversary of her death. And I saw all the love notes and beautiful letters people had written to her, and teddy bears and, you know, roses and things, just still missing Marilyn. And I I really, I loved Marilyn myself. I had played her once when I was 20. I think I've seen photos Yeah, online. probably, yeah, yeah. Like, I was 19 when I got the role, and then 20 when I performed it. And it kick-started my career, and then I started getting all these movies and television offers. And so I, st I got the inspiration to write a play about her, and I wrote it in L.A., and then I, I decided I wanted to do it in New York. And so I then moved to New York, and then that's when I started doing other shows like Law and & Order, and I did, even did Ninja Turtles while I was in New York. I did uh, PBS for PBS, anim uh, what was it called, Word World. I did a bunch of shows there, and plus plays and, like I said, movies and television, but I got to do my play um, off-Broadway and got it produced and performed in it for about a year. So, you know, I keep moving around. I keep pushing myself in my acting career to do different things and to take chances because I felt like, you know, many times we have all these dreams and we want to do this and, oh, wouldn't it be nice to do that? But unless we actually take a chance and take a step forward towards making it happen, it won't happen. So if I'm gonna, if I want to do a play in New York, I went, okay, I'm gonna write the play and then I'm gonna move to New York, I'm gonna get an apartment, I'm gonna get an agent, I'm gonna start looking for work and doing jobs whenever I can there until I can find the right people and the right um, fit to make it happen to do what I really want to do, which is my play. And it happened within a few years. So inspiring. Thank you. It really is. It's one of the reasons I love, like, just not Cyclonus, but you. Thank like, you. Like, everything you post online is so inspiring, and, like, it pushes, like, it helps me as not a very confident person mm -hmm. to want to do better for myself. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's just... Well, thank you. And the, and the thing is, you know, we all have our different comfort levels, and some of us are shyer than others. Some have anxiety issues or depression, right? Some some of us have mental health issues. I do too. I you know I I have anxiety and depression, and I'm on medication for that. I okay, there you go. And I'm sure many people watching this also are. And it doesn't mean that we're less than. It just means that. We have uh, certain illnesses that need to be addressed by medication, by meditation, by um, focusing on making sure that our mental health is in a good space so that we don't start to slip down and have our minds scurrying around trying to think of the worst possible scenarios that could either happen or about ourselves, like beating up on ourselves. And, you know, those of us who have anxiety, depression, we tend to do that. Yeah. And it's, it can be very debilitating, and it can keep you in bed for a day instead of, you know, getting up and 
trying to do something to make yourself feel good. But if we're aware of it and then we reach out and we get help and figure out what is it we need in order to balance ourselves, then we can actually start to think about, okay, what's the next step? What can I do? What are my dreams? What do I really want to do? We have to balance ourselves first. And once we're balanced, then we go, okay, I'm going to jump on a plane. I'm going to go to England. I'm going to go and study meditation for a week with these Buddhist teachers in the countryside. This is what I just did. And here in Southampton at the Kadampa Buddhist Center. Uh, and, and I'm going to meet up with a young person who has been a fan for many years and loves my character. And we're going to meet up in Southampton and we're going to do an interview and, and, and we're going to, to talk to others about <laughs> life. <laughs> and Stormhawks, Cyclonus, the best character ever. Anyone disagrees, unsubscribe now. I'm kidding. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Going back to the acting side, uh, do you remember how long it took recording the sessions for Stormhawks? Um, well, we would probably record them for a few months at a time. Um, yeah, we would come in like weekly and record until each each one was done. And <coughs> at the same time, um, we were all doing other shows too. So I would say like maybe three to six months. So quite a long time really. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, here's a, here's a little fun one. Which do you prefer as like your jobs? Voice acting, theatre, TV, or politics? <laughs> <laughs> I love them all. I really do. I love them all. I'm a complicated person in that I don't think I could just do one thing day after day after day. Um, I need uh, I need to feel excitement. I need to feel fulfilled. And for me to do that, I need to be constantly kind of uh, doing a number of different tasks that take up different parts of your mind and your soul. So, you know, I can go in and do an animation series, like I can do one episode a week, I could do five episodes a week, I could do one episode a month, I could do 25 episodes in a day. I mean, it depends on the role, it depends on what, what the schedule is that the people have in mind, but I can do that. And then I can go and do something else. I could be doing a movie or a television show, or I could be going to the theater at night and performing at night. Or I could be going into the legislature or parliament in the daytime in a suit and do my job as a parliamentarian. And then on the weekend, go to a comic con and <laughs> <laughs> turn into Master Cyclonus or uh, you know a rogue or or somebody. And and that's fun. <laughs> it's fun to be able to do that. And then take it all off and then on Monday you're back back at work with your suit on again talking about really important things for the country. <laughs> do you know if Stormhawks was it like motion captured? So like well you obviously know what that is. Or was yeah. it like straight up just It was animated? straight up animation. Uh, yeah. This is just a, a fun one because no one really knows. Do you, do you know or have any speculation on how cy or how old Cyclonus was supposed to be? Because there's I, some I think speculation. she was probably you know like li timeless. <laughs> well, we know she wasn't because the grandmother was okay. shown, who was her like mm -hmm. the previous master. Yeah, but still, how old was she? Uh, no one knows. Yeah. But there's speculation because the Stormhawks were like 14 that she was a child? I don't buy that. <laughs> no. I would say she was more like one of your timeless beings. That's a really interesting theory. Mm. Mm. There we go, people. She's not a child. I don't think she's <laughs> Please a child, not to, no. Not to us. No. Do you ever watch any of the stuff that you voice for or is it just kind of... Uh, not much. No, not really. Um, once in a blue moon, if someone sends me something and says, hey, take a look at this, and I'll take a look. But I, no, I haven't for a long time. 
I, I am going to be checking out a couple of episodes of X-Men soon because I'm going to a Comic Con in Grand Rapids, Michigan when I get back to North America from here. I'll be there on the 11th and 12th, I think, or the 11th until the 13th of November. And there's a panel about strong women. And so they want us to talk about one of the episodes where Storm and, and Jean Grey and uh, Rogue are all in it. And so all, they're going to have all three of us together at this Comic-Con, so we're going to be discussing it. So I need to watch it again to make sure I remember what happened. <laughs> it's been 30 years after all. <laughs> uh, something that I really loved with Cyclonus is... It's probably why I attached myself to her character was even when she failed in the show, they showed that she didn't give up. Mm. And I think that was something as a child, well, I was only like 13 or 14, I was mm -hmm. a little teenager, mm -hmm. that it really stuck with me. And I think with what you were saying and you were given like kind of creative freedom, I think mm -hmm. it's definitely down to you as mm. well. Thank you. Well, that's good. I mean, and especially if you were a young teenager who had self-esteem issues. Um, I would hope that my voice would help to give you confidence, too. Because I think one of the things that makes my voice different from a lot of other people is the quality. And I have a lot of compassion. Yeah. I, I really do have a lot of compassion for everybody and for all the suffering in the world um, and I have a strong wish for world peace I think Cyclonus had the opposite view <laughs> yeah but I think that my voice yeah it, it imbues everything that I do all of the characters so I think whether I'm playing um, an evil character or a good character that same um, voice comes through. Yeah, part of you. Is right? Still yeah, the part there. of me, yeah. And and I mean when you play a bad character, like an evil character, you have to remember that character started off probably with some good qualities. Yeah. And what happened to that character through their life to make them go down this different dark path. Yeah, but I wish they would have expanded on that because they show in like the smallest little snippet her as like a little child, mm. so there was, and you know, she's holding a little toy and stuff, so she was yeah. obviously at one point an innocent right. child with, right. who wasn't bad. Yeah, exactly. So I think, you know, we have to have compassion for people, whether they've gone down a really bad path or a good path, have compassion for them and try and help them see the goodness inside of themselves if we get that opportunity in order to bring them back to a, a shining and golden path of I think, I think self-love and compassion for others. I think the show definitely tried doing that with her as well with one of the episodes. I'm not sure how much you remember it, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. they had her some in a disguise befriend Piper, yeah. the other female yeah. from the Mm -hmm. The non villains, right? The heroes. I remember that, yeah. And they show her more vulnerable side where they mm -hmm. say she was a lonely girl who just wanted a friend, right? So they, they definitely made you feel something for her rather than look, she's just evil, she's going around punching people in the face for no reason, mm -hmm. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah, I remember that episode. It's one of the best for episodes. sure. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I always like the episodes where. I get to reveal the backstory or the yeah. origin story of my characters. I love them. I wish they would have given more for Cyclonus. Yeah, definitely. actually, I, I know. Those little snippets, yeah. I, know, I know what you mean. They're there, but it would have been nice to have one episode where you really get to, to know what what really happened. Yeah, definitely. Because like, with Rogue, I got to do that with A Rogue's Tale. You know, A Rogue's Tale is still to this day like my favorite episode of any show I've ever done. <laughs> Sorry, Cyclones. <laughs> that was the writers and the producers who gave me that opportunity. So. So, would you ever return if they made a new series of Stormhawks? Absolutely. I would love to. I would uh, love to play Master Cyclones again. Absolutely, we could rule the world. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
my goodness. And uh, just the, the final funniest one. Yes. Am I the only Cyclonist cos cosplayer you've ever seen? Yes, you are. You <laughs> really? win the award. <laughs> yes, indeed. You really are. And I, I mean, you do such a good job of it. I mean, honestly, I, I love this character. I love what she's done with it. The wig is fantastic. It's purple, in case you can't see, because it's a little dark there, but... It's, it's beautiful, perfect. and uh, and the the collar. It is keeps falling fantastic. back a bit. I think I need to counterweight it. It's beautiful because like because Cyclonus's collar, it it's like an, an anemone. Yeah, it it, it opens folds. up, and it will fold down too, depending on her moods. It's fabulous. I wish I had the skills to make it do that, but well, I mean, no, <laughs> I don't know this how this I is really do. great, and she's got a cape, too, and she's got the let's bring out the um. What do we call this? this? Crystal staff. Yeah, the purple crystal staff. I love it. Oh, look at this. Oh, isn't this <laughs> fabulous? I could use a purple crystal staff. Can I borrow it for a minute? Be yes. Gentle with it. I'll be very <laughs> gentle with it. But if I was wielding this purple crystal staff, I could do all kinds of things <laughs> in the universe. I love it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, and thanks for having me. Thank you. Yeah. I've tried all this time not to cry as well. Aww. Don't want to ruin the eyeliner, guys. Oh, yeah, you don't want to ruin the eyeliner, man. She's 80% eyeliner. Is she? Oh, wow. <laughs> you look fabulous, and it's really nice to meet you, and it's you really too. nice to chat with you. Yeah. And I hope your friends and followers enjoy this little chat. And... If they haven't seen uh, Stormhawks, go check it out on YouTube. I think it is all on YouTube. <laughs> I and think someone put it out. Okay. Yeah, and then uh, and also keep an eye out for X Men '97 next fall. We will be releasing the new show at that time. And in fact, um, right now, October 31st, Halloween is the um, birthday. It's, it's not 31st anymore. Well, today's the 1st, but last night was the 31st. And it was the when we showed X-Men, the 90s show, for the very first time. So it's the 30th anniversary, like right now. So I'm celebrating the 30th anniversary of X-Men, <laughs> and I'm here with my friend Bella. C celebrating um, Master Cyclone, my <laughs> my best evil character as well. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, you're so welcome. Gentle of this costume. Yes, we will. Oh, don't want to wreck that beautiful collar. It's just that it's, <laughs> it's the best collar. Oh, thank you so you're much. So this is literally the best day of my life. Oh, good. Good. Yeah, well, you just remember you can do anything that you set your mind to. Try. Yeah, you can. And don't let anyone tell you it can't be done. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching, guys. Don't forget, give this video a like and subscribe. Yeah, <laughs> subscribe to Bella. She's she's beautiful. Follow Lenore on everything. Well, that's true. At, at Lenore Zan on Instagram. I'll leave it all in the description. And at Zan Lenore on Twitter. And Facebook, just Lenore Zan. See you later. Bye. Oh, there we go. <laughs> she's she's disappointed in me. No, she's not. She, <laughs> you're doing very well. You you got me here, and we're having an interview, right? Yeah. <laughs> this isn't over, you know.